Get this rolling. So <clears throat> hello and welcome everyone. This will be our last weekly um, weekly meeting of the year. Yeah, Sudhir made it in here, so. Um, yeah, I just joined. It yeah. finally went through. Maybe Zoom was slow for some reason. Yeah. Um, so welcome and happy holidays to everyone. Um, so what we'll do our, uh -huh. our agenda for the day will be to, um, we'll go through the normal stuff, uh, the share drive, We'll do a market update. I'm gonna go through Market Pulse um, since we released that. And then I'm gonna show you guys how the screen earnings trades. Uh, there's a lot of questions on that as far as, you know, okay, I wanna, you know, like Winslow before I talked about, you know, above the SMA 200, uh, Russ had one about DMI. So I'll show you how to screen those candidates. Um, it's outside of the earnings module but I'll show you how to do that. Um, Sean's going to go through the earnings so far, what's going on with that, like a quick update. And then he's going to show you the seasonality function that we put in for the, uh, the between screening. Um, so we added in that functionality. Um, just a reminder, you should have received an email, but the YouTube replays of the earnings webinar are out on <clears throat> YouTube here. So if you just go under the playlist, you'll see earnings webinar Q4 uh, with the full playlist here. Um, you can watch Josh, are you, are you planning to post the slides? Last time you guys posted the slides. Um, I, and um, just because some, uh, just a few nuances have been updated, I'd like to have them. And so, I didn't see them on the share drive. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we'll, we'll post those. Well, here, uh, those are all studies ones. Huh? The slides are on there right now are from the studies um, okay. webinar, which I've already downloaded. Uh, I mean, uh, I know yeah. you, you may run up, be running out of room. I think most people have downloaded them. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll swap those out. And I thought I put them in there, but yeah, we put in the Excels, but <clears throat> we'll add in the, uh, the PowerPoints for those also. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have a lot of feedback, um, you know, just for, you know, everyone's information, like our, our main programmer's out for, he's getting married today. <laughs> um, so he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. So all these are kind of on the back burner. Um, you know, me and Sean, we'll go through and discuss them and stuff, but um, a lot, and I wouldn't look for any improvements for the next few weeks in the platform, um, just because they're the programmers <laughs> on leave, uh, getting married today. So, congratulations to him. <laughs> um, okay, but we do value the feedback, you know, please, uh, please keep that coming, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get through those in the, in the coming weeks here. Okay, um, the first thing I want to show you, so in your systems now. Hey, Josh, one quick thing on the feedback. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you have it, but uh, just so it's on the list, I realize the main programmer's out, but the target, state target page uh, still does not pick up when a stock has hit a stop loss. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're tracking, I'm personally tracking that one. Okay, just as long as you're aware, yeah. Okay, so um, the new thing that we kind of pushed out is that Market Pulse, um, you guys all liked it so much. So what we did, we gave this available to everyone to look at. So it gives you like snapshots of, you know, this is kind of the one I go to, um, current percentage. So we're look, we're, we'll work on improving the graphing functionality here. Um, but you can see, um, I think the, the highest it's been in state one since 2007 is at like 71. 
and we're, we're up right around there. So we're really, really high. Um, the other thing that we did improve on this, we put in a tab so you can go from showing, you know, all eight states to just a combination of the bullish and bearish. Um, so you can go and look at, you know, graphs historically, um, percentages historically, um, you know, going back in time to look at uh. someone's loud. I'm just going to mute some people. Um, okay, so so now we have that functionality, and everyone should have access to that. Um, you know, I think we'll develop some trading stuff more so on you know these type of things. Um, the other thing that we were discussing is adding in you know like a market pulse for you know the different sectors too. So you know, like we have a technology one. Um, healthcare, things like that. So that's what we're discussing. And I think we'll probably be rolling something out, you know, new, new year sometime on that. Okay. So, you know, we already talked, you know, Josh, yep. Josh, how did you, how did you get to that graph? What did you click on to get to it? Yeah, it's under uh, stocks and then market pulse. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, you know, we already talked, we're, you know, near historic highs, you know, at least since 07, the last 13 years. Um, also real high on, you know, the overall bull bullish bearish, and you can go into that screen and, you know, look back historically. So, you know, very overbought, you know, overall as far as, you know, the market pulse here. So when the we- The crossover to... points are very interesting. <laughs> yeah. when I, I'm looking at the- Current state percentage and you crossovers, those crossover points are really quite interesting and worth some in, more analysis. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we just recently you see the last crossover was on November 5th, right after the election. And we've been going up. Yeah, that graph right there. I was mm -hmm. looking at it on my other screen. These crossover points are really, if you correlate them to the, the market, uh, the market are very interesting. Yeah, and we also discussed putting in, you know, like SPX, so you could throw the market on there. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I think there's a lot. This is very powerful. Um, you know, all the market pulse on everything. So I think we're going to be focusing a lot on enhancements on, you know, making this, you know, even more and more useful. So. Yeah, definitely interesting, right? Very uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so when we, uh, I'll do the easy one first. So we're gonna do Russell and SPX and evaluate those quickly with state modeling. So we know Russell still up well above the target three. Um, you know, it's just been trending higher. All right, let's go. So, you know, it, it crossed above, you know, on no November 9th, pretty close to uh, <laughs> that other crossover. Anyway, this has been leading the market, you know, since uh, in, in recent times here, you know, made the all time, it was stuck. And people that have been with us for, you know, a year plus, we had talked about that 1600 level. So finally broke above that, you know, dipped back down and then took off. So now it's, you know, that 1600 is miles away, you know, it's almost at 2000 on the, on the Russell 2000. Um, so this has been leading the market, uh, you know, probably since kind of this time frame here. Um, and that's, you know, good overall for the market, you know, that the small caps are leading away. I mean, that's where most of the, you know, growth is. <laughs> um, so, so this is, um, you know, kind of in no man's land, doesn't really tell us much other than it's really bullish and at some point it'll turn around. Um, you know, when, when that is, is very difficult to say. So um, we'll look to the SPX to at least tell us, um, give us better indications of market direction.
Not sure why it's slow to. So, you know, we've been talking about this the uh, you know past week or two, uh, or at least two weeks ago in our meeting. Um, you know, this very strong resistance at target three. Um, you know, this is following a typical state one pattern. You know, where it gets up or around target three, and then you know has real problems. Um, staying above that. So it's been exhibiting the same thing here. Um, you know, we're <clears throat> getting close to kind of the average days. You know, we've gone higher than the average move. So it's popped above, but, you know, this is definitely showing <clears throat> resistance. So, you know, as far as overall market, unless it can get above that and, you know, hold for at least like two, three days, then, um, you know, just be very careful. You know, we've been kind of preaching that recently, you know, uh, you know, the past few weeks, just be careful. And you can see it hasn't really done much, you know, dip, come back, you know, dip a little, just kind of sideways. You know, I don't think anything will happen tomorrow, um, you know, but going into the new year, um, you know, I'd just be, be very careful, you know, unless it can get above that target three and hold for a few days. That may be, you know, a sign that things are all, turning even more bullish. Otherwise, I would kind of expect the average, you know, typical state one, which it's pretty much done, you know, gets up to that first target, comes down support, you know, fights through it, gets up here, and then kind of turns around. So that's kind of the typical state one. Um, so, you know, that's what I would normally plan for in those state ones, unless you can get above and hold that target three. So, um, so that's just kind of, you know, my take on the market, you know, just be be careful. I don't think it's going to move much in the next day. Um, but, you know, going into the new year, I think a lot of this that's being driven is, uh, <laughs> you know, the contested election. So it could see some, uh, you know, going into the new year, some, you know, at, at the beginning of the year, be a lot of volatility, you know, depending on what happens. So, and I don't think anyone has that crystal ball. So, um, so uh, that's the basic summary of the market. Any uh, questions or comments? I looked at what's uh, here called out a few minutes ago on current states percentage, mm -hmm. and I erased everything but one and two. Yeah. It looks like he's right. It looks like there's a remarkable correlation. So the, the reason I popped up is that it seems to me if you all could overlay the spy, we could yeah. all tell pretty quickly if that was a really good correlation. Right. Oh, so you're talking on this screen? Yeah, I pulled off I pulled off everything except one and eight. One and eight, yeah. Um twelve o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, if you if back that up to one year do it do year to date. Okay. Six months. Well, do year to date so you can pick up the early part of the year. I don't know what those little hits are you've got on yours. They don't show up on mine. I'm in current states percentage. No. You're in current states. Now look at where the turns were in February. Look at where that peak is right before the turn down in February, uh, probably February the 20th. Okay. And then the, the, the confirming is probably the crossover. Right. It'd be, it would be interesting to see how it lines up with the spy. Right. Oh, yeah, I, I think just the toggle button, like you have the percent state, but you know, one more where you could toggle the spy on and off or the SPX, whichever yeah, one you yeah. want. That yeah. would be, it would be very interesting. Right. Oh, I agree. You know, um, we already talked about that. So that, you know, anything like that won't be accomplished till our guy gets back. <laughs> but yeah, we had already discussed that, putting it on there. I mean, it, you know, you want to see the correlation, you know. So, yeah. Definitely interesting. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you guys can manually go back and kind of track these, see, see uh, you know, how it correlates. We'll get it in there, you know, sometime in January if he can do it. So, um, okay. I have to say that uh, on the feedback that we've given you, he has, uh, he has implemented those changes in general very quickly. So yeah, he's, uh, oh, yeah. he deserve, deserves a good break and uh, a bonus uh, if you can, so. Yeah, oh, definitely. And you know, his, his, his Christmas bonus is uh, he's getting married. <laughs> yeah. And, and, our, and our gift to him when he gets back is like a, a huge pile of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they call it paid vacation. You pay when you come back. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, he's he's uh, fantastic. You know, both of, we have two programmers, one uh, front end, one back end. So um, they're both fantastic. And you know, if, if the ideas uh, make sense to us, we can implement them pretty. You know, he can do it pretty quickly. So yeah, he's been very quick from what I've seen. Yeah. Okay. So any other things on the market in general? Questions, comments? Okay. I'm waiting for a correction. Yeah, well, it's always real hard to call that top, but I mean, I just watch that, you know, target three on, you know, SPX is the only thing really giving us an indication. So, um, you know, I, I definitely feel it's coming um, in the near, very near future. So uh, mm -hmm. I'd just be, I'd be careful in any bullish bets. So, yeah. Okay, um, so the other, we had some questions before, I was just gonna cover it. Um, people are talking. So, you know, we sent out the, and I'm just gonna pull them here, um, like the bullish pre-runners, you know, this is kind of everyone's favorite type thing. Um, sorry. So we, we pull up this, um, the you know the analysis that we did and you guys can now all download these so <clears throat> if people want to screen them for other criteria um you know like uh Winslow likes sma 200 uh russ had something about you know dmi so the way that we can do this we just have to create a stock list from you know our best trades so if we're doing all these trades um then all we have to do is create a stock list of all these symbols so that we can, you know, create it in Delphi and then we can screen them based off of that. Um, so I'll show you quickly how I do that. So I just, if you already saved this, you just delete that, uh, delete this. I don't know why that's so loud. Delete that, yes. So, and then we just save as. So that's all you need is the, the symbol. And I'll just stop this. Close pre runner. So that I had to do this. Oh, good Lord. I got to turn that thing down. Okay. So now we save that in there. So it, once we go into our system, we want to go into the organizer and we want to create a stock list. So all we have to do here, and I already created it, but I'll do another one. Um, we just add a new stock list and then we import it. And the format's here and all it is is symbol and then type below. Um, but if you want to look at the format, it's here. But we already had it in the proper format. So we just go into um, earnings, Q4, go find our stock list, bullish pre-runners, and we open that file. So you can see hey, it. Hey, Josh. Yeah. I, I think if, if memory serves, you have to use the spreadsheet that you get when you push the format button. You can't just copy the way it looks, if I remember correctly. Um. I'll show you the, the difference real quick. So stock format desktop. Um, this is the format symbol and then you just put it, you know, from two all the way down. So, you know, my, my thing was the same exact thing. It was symbol and then you have to have them, you know, capitalized all the way down and it'll import them. 
So as long as it's that format, it doesn't have to be this exact, you know, file. You don't want to type them in. Um, if you had, you know, because it worked properly for that one I just did. Um, full free runner. And if it doesn't, re you know, so it showed that all of them were uploading. And then you can see 144 of 144. So they all imported here. And then you can go in and verify and make sure that, you know, your stock list is correct by going in the organizer back in the stock list. And from here, you can just, you know, make sure they're in there. Um, and you can individually add things out, you know, delete them or add ones in if you want. So if there's pre runners you're not doing, you can pull those out. Watch your way. So here's our 144, and you know you can search through. You know, if I'm not doing ADNT. I can delete that one, right? So you can alter that list quickly. But so the reason we do that for scanning, so as things come up in your calendar, and you want to you know do secondary scanning for them, you'll just use that instead of, you know, your liquid options or whatever you're using, you just use your bullish pre-runner. So from there, we can screen it for anything. Um, so this would, you know, the day before or something like that, um, close greater than 200 day SMA. Um, and then it'll only search as bullish pre-runners. So you'll still have to, you know, quickly kind of find them in there. Um, you know, you can sort by name, you know, by price. Um, and, you know, so if we had, you know, Google coming up tomorrow, it's not tomorrow, but, you know, um, and your main screen was 200 day, you know, it's above the 200 day SMA, then, you know, check, you know, so it's a, a quick way to do that. Um, so you can do as much as you want, you know, as far as secondary screenings. And Russ is just joining, he's the one asked about this. <laughs> uh, I guess he'll, ca he'll catch the replay. Um, so, you know, so that's one way that you can do it. You know, it's, it's a little, um, there, there's no other way to do it in the system right now um, where you can go on a calendar and add in extra things. So you have to do, you know, use your, your list that, you know, we obviously created and, um, you know, you're going to have to screen form, you know, um, in, in the custom screener by doing anything else. But, you know, from here you can add in, you know, whatever else, um, what other other indicators you want to do. So does, does that make sense to people? Anyone? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's how, how you would do it. You know, as things come up in the earnings plan, you want to, you know, do SMA, you want to do the DI histogram. Um, I'm not sure. There we go. DI histogram. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want and screen them quickly. So it, it's just a matter of getting that stock list of, of the ones that you're trading. And, you know, before you get into the trade, you know, you get the alerts for that, um, you know, so I would just quickly verify uh, that, you know, whatever that symbol is, you, it, it met your secondary criteria. We also, um, one other thing just on the earnings before Sean gets going here, the, um, we also have those earnings alerts coming out. Um, so that's not perfected yet. Um, so if you guys find issues, but they should populate each morning here. Um, so if you find any issues with those, um, please, you know, fire off an email to me or Sean. We're, we're verifying those right now. Um, but you can also go in and they should also, those earnings alerts should, you know, be populating in, in this daily alert tab also. Um, so in this one, so we found this is an error. So um, I found the pre alerts still to be a day off, day late. Uh, a day late. Well, they should come in the morning. So the, the way it's supposed to work, 
and it will work, um, <laughs> is you know at 9:30 you'll get an email. Um, you know, for the trades that are occurring today, you know, not yesterday or whatnot. So it'll be the oh, trade. Okay. I haven't gotten one of those emails. Yeah. I get them the night before. And then I also manually look at the pre alert tab in Delphian and the ones that were, of course, it's really early in the earnings plan, but the ones I saw populate when you hit the pre alert mm -hmm. button were when the Delphian system updates. Uh, after market close, but it was for the trade you should have done when the market was open that day. Right. Yeah. Right. So each morning it should update at 930 saying, here's the trades you need to do today. And then it'll hold that until the next open. Okay. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. So that that's coming out. Um, that should be pop, you know, as we get more and more trades, it'll populate. Um, but we're individually verifying that. So if you have any questions or see concerns with that, um, you know, let us know. So, okay, so that was a quick thing on, you know, secondary screening and, you know, it's just a matter of setting up the stock list and doing a custom screen for whatever criteria you want. Um, so I guess that was my portion, Sean, uh, you ready to go here, bud? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so thanks everyone. Uh, let me see, I'll share my screen. All right, so what I wanted to show too was, I, we talked about it a little bit before, just kind of looking at what Josh was just talking about. So when you have that screener in there for, you know, the DMI or the moving average, um, I use this one a lot as well. So I'll use, a similar screener like that, but I will also add in my, um, I'll use my stock filters, my earnings day, or yeah, my earnings day, and I'll say within, let's just say three days, and I'll do any calendar day. If I hit find stocks at that point, then it's going to show me the stocks that have earnings within the next three days, or at least that we have as scheduled within the next three days. And then you can add on, um, you know, your moving average or your DMI. So then you did this on a Sunday or if you did it on a Monday, it would show you the days that have earnings coming out that week. And then you can kind of get an idea of stocks that might be above their moving average or um, you know below certain DMI levels or whatever kind of you're looking at. And that'll give you a good idea of maybe some of those stocks you want to pay attention to for the upcoming. So you know, I would use the same uh, stock list like Josh spoke about, that bullish pre-runner stock list in here. I would add this earnings as within a certain number of days if I wanted to do that. And then those other filters on top of it give me an idea of maybe some that I want to start looking at for this week. So uh, that's just an additional step that I that I take for myself. So that's for you guys to use as well. Yeah, um, a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just messing around with it and just finding kind of what what works for you. You know. You know. So. Um, so yeah. So what I did want to talk about is there's a couple of things. You know, we have the the earnings plan, so we have that come out. I want to go over the, some of the seasonality stuff as well. So for the earnings plan, um, there were a couple of stocks out there that have already you know triggered off on some of those bullish pre runners. The market's been sideways to obviously up, making some pretty big moves to the upside. So those bullish pre runners are are coming to fruition. So like Josh mentioned before, I'm trying to keep track of them all um, within the virtual portfolio. So I'm hoping to have all these in there in these different segments, you know, based on what category they're in within our earnings plan. And then therefore we'll get a good idea. As of right now, I have uh, Delta and there was another one in, in there that I added in there, even though those dates were confirmed. So I'm probably gonna end up taking those out. I'm not sure which, which way to do it as of yet. But if I click on the bullish uh, pre-runners, we can see, um, you know, there's a couple BBBY was in there currently at a loss, TAL was in there, and then WBA. There's one closed one, which was STARS. That one was a profit pretty quickly, uh, the Constellation brands. Um, so I'm putting these in there and I'm putting them in there as around $1,000 worth of risk. So I'm trying to keep it above a thousand, you know, right at a thousand bucks. And if one option's taking me above a thousand dollars, maybe the 1200, I'm gonna do that extra option. So. You know, the risk is probably going to be between a thousand to you know thirteen hundred bucks or so a position. Um, 
So I'm putting those in there. I'm going to track them. And then I'm also tracking them in the, um, I'm going to track them on the uh, shared files that we have. Not shared files to put out to everybody because I don't want to kind of bore everybody with that information, but similar to what here did in a, a different way. I'm going to have it on this that I have saved on my desktop live tracking, and I'm going to have it if it's estimated or confirmed, and then what the entry date was when we entered into that trade. So as you can see here, I'll put some information on here too of the, the trade entry price and things like that, whether it's profitable or not. But you can see for stars, it was confirmed. We got in on 12.15. Um, that TAL was still estimated, but it would have been an entry date of 12.18. And then you can see that WBA um, was confirmed. So I'm going to try. Did to you do the TAL? I did not. Uh, I didn't do, do it either because the earnings were unconfirmed. So right. I passed on the trade. So I'm just curious if you passed or took it. I, I did pass on it. I did do the, the Delta Airlines one. Personally, I did that one. Those dates were still kind of estimated as well. Um, mm -hmm. That was a bearish pre-runner, I believe. Let me pull that mm -hmm. one up. Um, but I did do that one. And just because of kind of the concerns of everything that was going on now and looking forward, uh, I just, I was like, well, let me just take a chance on that one being bearish. And I've, and I've told this before to some other people as well. Um, you know, a lot of these trades are those bullish type trades and the market is so bullish as of right now and kind of being a little toppy. I don't mind taking some of these smaller risk trades to have some bearish positions in my account just in case things do kind of turn around and at least i'm not hedged perfectly but it does kind of give me a little bit of you know profitability on the downside if we take some of these big moves down so i wouldn't have yeah. that one. generally if i cannot if the s uh, the earnings date is uh show when the trade date comes up if it's still showing estimated and i can't see a confirmed date on think or swim uh, you know, I, I don't know about other people, but I, I'm choosing to pass on those trades because I like to see the earnings date confirmed, right? Yeah. But yeah. Um, don't know what I, what yeah. what is recommended there. Yeah, and and when I talk to people, I recommend to to pass on it, right? Because really the really the entry date based on the earnings date is the optimized, you know, back test results from what Josh has done. So. I, I would pass on it based on that. Cause like you said, if it moves it seven days out or if it moves it seven days closer, that could be a real issue, um, you know, time frame wise based on the trade and it can really mess up those results. So I feel like if it's estimated to pass on it, um, in my opinion, just yeah, because- Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, cause we're using it based on the back test results. And at that point it's, it's you're kind of, kind of taking it to the wind, you know, for the lack of a better phrase, so. But I put them in here. I think I'm going to put them in here just to kind of track them. Maybe I don't know. I'm 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 trying to get as much information in here as I can, and then later, if I want to delete it out, I can kind of delete it or hide it. But I feel like if I don't do it, then later I'm going to probably wish I did. So I'm trying to trying to figure it out in my mind what's the best way. So, um, but I'm going to put those trades there too. I'm probably going to put like an entry price and an exit price, and whether or not it was a profit or a loss at that point as well. So. Um, any feedback on that, definitely feel free, shoot me an email. I'm trying to trying to track it my best that I can. I got those in there, like I said, um, you know, in here as well. So um, we'll be able to look at them. Uh, Don't schedule anything in, um, uh, from uh, week, uh, it'll be about week three to week six. <laughs> right. That, that is the peak of this earnings plan. It gets really busy. Yeah, it's going to be super busy. And I think like you mentioned last time, once we're getting on to those bullish runners, ones that track days out, I'm going to just have to put those in like a calendar and have an alert the day before that says, hey, you know, this is the exit day for this particular trade and, and go from there. So. Yeah, it's one thing if you just do the trade, but if you, like I did, do pretty extensive tracking on to see what's working and what's not, that mid January to mid February range is going to be uh, it, it. There's a lot of trades in there. Right. So yeah. It's going to be. So, so here, how many trades do you have on Max at a time? Uh, I don't know about total trades. I never do more than one trade per symbol. So, yeah, you, for any, example, go ahead. Any given day, how many did you have on Max? 
I didn't measure it. I didn't limit myself. I mean, if, if the earnings were confirmed and uh, it was the trade entry date, uh, you know, I did it. But okay. if, like I said, if, so I may have had at one time, you know, dozens, you know, 20, 24 trades. When, when you hit the peak of the earnings season, there's a lot of trades out there. Okay. Um, but I'd never, like, for example, if you had, um, let's say a vol rise trade that was open and it, be, it becomes, a, I don't know, a mover trade or, or a bullish run or something. I never had more than one trade per symbol. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and then so, so what I was going to try to show with the sheet here is, yeah, you can see, you know, at some points, this is just for the bullish pre-runners as well, but you can see currently, you know, I mean, if I don't know what the week is of January 20th, let's say, so 26, 27, 28, so 25th through the 29th is one week. So in theory, you know, 25th through the 29th, that's 25 symbols right there. And that's just, or I'm sorry, I'm missing one. So 26, right? So that's 26 symbols on the bullish pre-runner list. Um, not necessarily if they're estimated or confirmed as of yet, but 26 that you could have in that one week of January if you did them all, depending if they're all confirmed. So, And then if you go on board, you can see, like you said, sit here. I mean, you're talking about February 1st. I mean, this whole week, February 1st through the 3rd is another 32. So the 1st through the 3rd is, um, what is that? So you're talking about that's a week as well, the first through the third, and then even add in the fourth in there. So those are, you know, 30 plus trades also. So concurrently, I mean, that's that those two weeks combined, you're talking about 50 plus trades, unless they hit within a couple of days, like that Constellation Brands or some of those other ones are, you know, have done in the past. So Right. If they if they close quick, that's fine. But then the the what I found is keeping track of the you know, you have the entry date, but there's also an exit date. You've got to keep track of, you know, what, you know, like some have to be exited before earnings, some exit a certain, the day after earnings or some exit specific number of days after earnings, right? So right. when you hit that peak to track all that is, uh, is uh, quite extensive. So <laughs> yeah, it's don't, gonna be a don't plan any vacation during that. <laughs> all right, no, it's going to be the past for sure. So, so yeah, hopefully we'll get it all, we'll get it, get it going for you and then you'll, we'll all have it. And then we can see on two on, I just pulled this one up as well. So this is the bearish pre-runner. There was just that one thus far, which was the Delta. And within you know a couple of days, it hit the profit as well. Um, that's one, again, that wasn't confirmed. So I'll probably end up taking that one out. Um, but yeah, like I said, I just wanted to kind of put it in there at first and see kind of what it looks like afterwards. So um so yeah, so I'm tracking those. I mean, as as we as we've seen, if you you're pulling up the plan, um, you know, you can see that there's already some dates that have changed. Uh, again, this couple that aren't confirmed as of yet, that would have been trades that we wanted to pass on. So we're already kind of seeing the effects of the potential of these earnings dates changing. And then, you know, based on the stuff from before, uh, you know, Citigroup here, and then we're looking at uh, Goldman Sachs. This other one, they've already changed their dates, whether or not they're forward in time and back, I haven't confirmed that, but we can see that those dates have changed. So again, as long as you come into this plan every day, you know, open up the Q4 2020 and it refreshes, this, these dates will change as we get new information, you know, from the company or from Zach's, and then in turn, these dates will change as well. Um, if you save it, print it, or kind of save it to your desktop and don't you know, if you don't refresh it, meaning coming in here and doing this, you, you'll probably have the wrong dates um, if the dates do, well, you will have the wrong dates if the dates change, um, but some of these that are confirmed, you, we should be good to go, so. Um, That's been a helpful change, by the way, the yellow highlighting, and uh, I go in every day. Of course, like the last quarter, I uh, created, I, I printed the plan, and then I converted it to Excel and have my own working Excel file, but, um, then I go in and uh, look every day, and it's usually five or six yellow lines that right. uh, have occurred. And and then I will update my working Excel file to match 
uh, but having the yellow highlights is a big help because you know there's 200 plus rows there. So uh, you know you can just go right to the yellow rows and okay, that's those are the ones I need to update on my file. So that's been right. really nice. So it helps you update that file. Yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah. And then, you know, so what I'll do too is I'll come in here and if I see some that are coming out, you know, within a couple of days, you know, we're talking um, the 28th or, you know, some of the vol rise maybe uh, on the that date still estimated because that's Delta. But, you know, if I see some of these that might look like they might be reasonable to do, such as Netflix confirmed on 1228 would be the bullish pre runner. Um, you know, what I might do is for myself, I might say, okay, well, Netflix in a couple of days, let me look at this bullish pre runner file that Josh has done. So if I go down in alphabetical order and I'm looking at Netflix, okay, so Netflix uh, 14 days before, which is already figured out on the earnings plan. But what I'm really looking at is, you know, it's a 5.71 or 5.72 profit factor with a 90% win rate. So that's pretty good results for what I'd be looking for based on getting into a trade. Now I would want to look at obviously to see how much is that option going to cost. Netflix isn't the cheapest of stocks, but it's not the most expensive either. So but this kind of tells me, all right, well, it's a 90% win rate, um, you know, so then I would want to be prepared for the 28th to come around and, and look to be able to get into that trade. So um, other people like sit here and, and someone else might have, you know, sit here has the, uh, you know, the, the file that he follows that way. Uh, this is kind of what I do. And I'm always looking for, you know, for better ways or, or a more proficient way. So having a file like that, I think is going to help. Um, but, but that's what I do. I kind of look at it that way. Um, some other people were looking to sort, you know, you could sort this file based on the win percentage or sort it by profit factor and then get that stock list and then, you know, just track that stock list on your own if you wanted to do that. So, you know, we sorted this list out, I think based on 80% and above, but if you wanted to sort it out using other factors ahead of time, you could do that. And that would kind of give you an idea of, you know, the stocks that you might want to be looking to trade, you know, in the future when those trades come about. Any thoughts or comments from anyone on those? All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so the, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about the seasonality. Um, you know, some people had mentioned in the meetup group in Tampa, you know, we had talked about years past about the Santa Claus rally. Um, we And then we've looked at, you know, and I mentioned last time, I think about, you know, stocks that potentially were gonna rally, you know, for the first part of the year. Um, you know, I'd heard before, you know, that funds or, or people in general, you know, investors want to take profits at the end of the year. And this year would be a great year probably to take profits with the amount of stocks that have, you know, moved, you know, up dramatically um, and then maybe reposition themselves back, you know, after the first of the year. So we can test that with the seasonality. So those are some of the things that I've been looking at. Um, I want to kind of show you some of that information as well. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this earnings plan or the earnings stuff that we have going on right now? All right, good. All right, so the seasonality stuff, we'd mentioned it before. If we go into stocks and then I go into seasonal, um, we'd mentioned it before adding that new between screener, which is great. I mean, we, we found kind of a workaround to do that within the other screener tab, but this helps just to be able to do it right from this particular page. Um, so I have mine before mine was set up to where it just automatically populates all stocks or, you know, the stock list that we have. Again, if you ever want to make any changes to this stock list that populates for you or any of this screen or information here, you can always do that under general settings and you can go in here and make any changes. So these defaults are customized to what you want to do. Um, you know, in the overall section is where I have my stock list here as my default stock list as my new liquid options list. You can change that to whatever stock list you want. Um, and then once you change it, you can hit save and it'll do it um, with your signals. Here's all your signals within the different categories that you can change. Once you change them, um, just save it. And then those will be automatically populated for you when you go to that section. So I just wanted to show everybody that. Uh, that's a huge one to make your life a little bit easier if you know there are certain strategies or certain stock list that you use every time when you go into the platform or go into certain sections. So, um, so seasonality, mine shows up as my new liquid options list. So what, what I want to show first is if I'm looking for something seasonality from now until the next 20 days, then I can use 
today's time frame. So I can say, okay, well, starting on the 22nd, which is the end of yesterday, I want to look at stocks that typically don't move over the next, um, you know, 10 days. Or, you know, based on that Santa Claus rally, we could say, well, I want to look at stocks that are going to move at least 5% over the next 10 days. You can do whichever one you like. It's, it's totally up to you. So if I want to say, let me see all the stocks that typically move 5% within the next 10 days, I click on my price change. I can say 10 days, the move is going to be greater than, and let's just say 5%, negative, I'm going to leave out of here. Minimum price, I'll leave at zero. And then let me say, yeah, I want to say 10 out of 10, 10 years. If I click outside of there, it's going to auto run it on the liquid options list. And boom, I have one stock. Um, this SRPT typically makes a move of 5% or greater in the next 10 days, at least nine out of 10 years. And this is 10 trading days. So if I wanted to test it using different strategies, I can do that. But now we can see that when I run it based on that time frame, I'm not really showing much within this liquid options list as far as like a Santa Claus rally or something that would spark my interest to, to want to trade it. I can make, you know, obviously I can make different changes. 10 days to 20 days where I can get a little less aggressive on my nine out of 10 years and possibly pull in more symbols. So if I do seven out of 10, um, then I'm probably gonna get a bigger list. Right now I have 19 symbols. So, you know, you can look at that and say, well, now here's some that I might wanna trade based on that rally, but still, I didn't really find much in here that, that sparked my interest, but some might for you. But you know, you can see advanced micro devices. We can see Cena Corporation. Uh, I think they might have earnings coming out pretty soon. Um, you can see universal display, uh, what are some other names, maybe Canadian solar, uh, Boyd gaming is one that comes up, but you know, with the thing with COVID and the, the effect on the casinos and different areas of that, this Boyd gaming and MGM, uh, you know, might be a problem. That might be one that I, I would say this might be, this year might be an anomaly, might not, but I, I want to take some other of those factors in there. KB Holmes, we know the real estate market is, is pretty big right now. So that could be a reasonable one to jump into depending. Um, so I can always run this and I can run it using a long call strategy. You know, I can say long call, let me look for a 15% profit, 100% stop loss, 60 days. I'm going to be in the options pretty short. We're only talking 10 days. Um, so I would say my position holding, I might want to leave, put it to 10 days, uh, 60 days expiration there for the option, 30 delta. Again, you can change all these, but if I hit analyze, you know, we're looking at that SRPT, uh, you know, minimal win percentage with a minimal profit factor. So one that I would not want to look, but, you know, we can always do a bulk test on it and then run that bulk analysis. So um, if I do a bulk for that particular long call strategy and hit analyze, we'll get those results, 188 trades. Obviously, if it works using that long call strategy or some of them look good, um, you know, I would test it on the bull put strategy. I know a lot of people are kind of hindering away from those long calls right now, um, but possibly you could look at it using a bull put strategy and, uh, and see if you get some pretty good results that way. That's something I would want to be testing as well. Um, so we're going to wait for that to finish running. And once that runs, I'll show you guys that, that particular report. So that's the seasonality, you know, with looking at it for the next coming days. Um, I did a different one. I did something similar to what Sadir had talked about before. Um, let me close this out. Oh, that's going to open it up for me, but we can look at it. So I'll come in here, and this is the bulk analysis. I can download it into an Excel file. But if I click on it based on my profit factor, I can sort it out. And then it shows me there's a couple there with long calls that you know have some pretty fair results depending on um, you know what you're looking for. So let me get this to work a little bit easier to see. Um, so we can see the win percentage on this CF, 100%, you know, decent profit factor, obviously 100% win rate. And you can kind of go down the line, 90% win rate with a $10 profit factor. Uh, advanced micro devices, uh, win rate, 7.6 profit factor. So all of these are just a way to kind of look at trades that, you know, might be uh, the, the quote-unquote Santa Claus rally, if you wanted to look at that. But we are looking at something, you know, 20 days out, so it is it is going a little farther out. Um, any questions on that? Now, I can always come back in. I'm going to just refresh it so it goes back into the seasonality because I'm in that bulk analysis. But, um, you know, one that you could do and that Sadir had mentioned before 
is if we're using the new liquid options list, we can always use this between, and that's the one that we added in there was this between functionality. So one that I, you could look at is say, okay, well, 10 days out between, let's just say 5% and a negative 5%. Um, I was looking at similar to what Sudhir looked at, like some of the iron butterfly trades. So I did a minimum price of 30. Now 30, so stocks below 30 should not be in the liquid options list, but some might pop up in there. So I just want to put that there just in case. And I'll leave this as seven out of 10. If I click outside of that, you know, I have a handful of companies that come up. There's 200 here, uh, symbols that meet that criteria for the next 10 days to not move between negative five and plus 5%. So since there's 200 items, typically what I'll do is I'll say, all right, well, let me get a little more aggressive on this uh, range. So let me try nine out of 10 click out and now I still have 79. So we can see there's a decent amount of symbols that populate in there based on um, you know, that criteria. Now let's see if I hit 10 out of 10. Now there's, now there's 12. So 10 out of 10, we're looking at 12 symbols that we can look at, which is, which is a little more manageable. Um, and these change you know, day to day. I used the similar screener yesterday or the day previously and um, two symbols that aren't on here now popped up. So Starbucks was one and Accenture was another. So you can see with the date changing, you know, the symbols are gonna change as well. So you're always gonna find uh, new stocks or new options to trade, you know, depending on the date you're on because these things do change day to day. So based on that, if I wanted to look at this, um, again, we're talking about the iron butterfly trade, which um, you know, take it or leave it. It's a, it's a great trade if you like it. If you don't, I understand completely as well. But let's look at like a 15% max profit. Um, we're trading trading a short time frame, so let's do a weekly options. And then similar to what we were talking about with, um, you know, with the Volcris trade, let me put five or let me put six days in here to make sure I'm pulling in next week's options. Now, you can change it to do this week's expiration or next, depending on how you want to do the test. But I'm just using it to skip a week to give me a little more time. If I hit analyze, now it's going to show me. So based on Hershey's, based on this screener, it's showing me that Hershey's has an 83% win rate, 3.70 profit factor based on the iron butterfly strategy. So, you know, I can do the bulk analysis like we talked about before, um, or I can kind of come down the list and uh, see if any of these kind of match some good profile of, of what I want to do. Uh, based on that iron butterfly strategy. So, um, you know, I did the two from yesterday in my personal account. I did Starbucks and I did Accenture. Uh, both of those had, I think they are above above 90% or close to it. So they both look pretty good. And I kind of use my own analysis with that too. I say, well, is there anything over the next, you know, two weeks that are going to make any of these stocks make a big move? And if I can't really think of something, then, you know, so be it, right? It seems like that trade to collect that premium would be a good trade to put on low risk with a decent reward. Um, but some of them like that Cena Corporation or some others that ha might have an impact over the next two weeks, you might wanna shy away from if they have earnings or some other event that it might affect uh, the outcome for that particular stock. Um, one thing to note though with these, so if we're tra trading it based on this screener, it's a little bit different from our vol crush trade, right? Because you're not getting much volatility in these options just based on a normal day in the market, typically. So when you're looking at a Starbucks or you're looking at a PepsiCo um, or whatever the stock is, the implied volatility on PepsiCo options might be really low right now, but that doesn't take away from the validity of this screener with this price move. You're not going to get as much credit, you know, as you would if earnings were tomorrow, but that still doesn't take away, you know, from the actual trade itself. Um, any questions on kind of that logic? Anybody? Something? So let me hit. Yeah, I've been doing this trade um, every week. Hmm, getting a big echo. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been doing this trade since the middle of November, as I mentioned on the weekly call. And um, just doing a weekly trade, I started on Monday. And uh, I used the Friday expiration just five days out. And uh, I had one break even and all the others were profitable. And uh, I got uh, confident enough to where now I'm letting them run instead of just getting out at 15%, I'm letting them run and collecting the theta throughout the week. But I do get out on 
Thursday or in this week. This week I'm in two of them, uh, you know, because the market is closed on Friday. Uh, tomorrow's the last day of trading for this week. I'll get out uh, this afternoon. Uh, so I don't, um, you know, one of the things about the iron butterfly is one of your short positions is always in the money. Right. So you don't want to be in that short position on Friday morning or in this case, Thursday morning, because you might get assigned. So I always get out the day before. Right. Yeah. But it works. This, the seasonality screen uh, works. Uh, previously, I had been, uh, you know, of course, uh, Sean, you'd shown kind of the other way to do the between. Now with the between function here on this screen, it makes it even faster. Right. Yeah, it makes it better. And you know, like you mentioned, I mean, that's something that they implemented pretty quickly and it, it, it helps, you know, because I think like you said, doing those trades, that's the exact screener I think that you want for that particular setup. So it, it helps for sure. Yeah, yeah and you're right. I mean, I, I believe getting out the day before too, you know, getting out that Thursday is going to help mitigate, you know, the, that assignment risk, which, you know, it's not, a, I mean, it's not the worst things if you get assigned again, because the trade is still intact as a whole, but it does kind of cause a little bit of pain and you got to kind of manage out of it, you know, close the shares and close the position or try to do it at the same time as close as possible. So you don't, you know, take a loss on one side or the other if you get out of one before the other. So, um, you know, oh, and the other thing for the group I would caution is uh, I always check to make sure there's an ex, there isn't an X dividend date uh, in that week, right? So right. Uh, be careful because people will assign things, you, you know, it, just, just so you, especially if the short call is in the money, you know, you could get assigned a short position and then owe the dividend, right? Mm, oh, right, right, yeah. So uh, I, I do check uh, on uh, the stock when that, if it's a dividend paying stock, when the X dividend date is. When the X dividend is, right. That's that's a good idea as well, for sure. Because I think I did an Apple one around that date too. And it seemed like I got exercised quick, you know, faster than normal, uh, probably because of that dividend date coming about. So yeah, that's a good one as well. And two, you know, note with some of these, if you like the iron butterfly trade, I mean, we can speak more detail about it, you know, off this call here, but you're not going to get I mean, you're going to get pretty close to your two to one risk to reward, but it's not always going to be the two to one risk to reward. This, for instance, I'll pull one up here, this uh, Citrix system. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'll pull it up just to show everybody. But like for my Starbucks that I did yesterday, I think I got a credit of 195 uh, and my list was 105. I got a credit of 490 and my list was 260. So you can see the Starbucks and the Accenture were both just shy of that two to one uh, risk to reward. But uh, you know, I was comfortable with the results that I've seen in the system, plus, you know, taking that trade with the time frame that we're in. So, you know, I take some things into account. So here might do something a little bit different. But, you know, like you mentioned, Friday's a holiday. Tomorrow's probably a pretty light day of trading. This whole week is fairly light for the most part, typically. So selling options around this time frame, I feel like you can collect a little bit more, uh, you know, time decay or premium based on that because of the holidays and, and the light volume of trading. Now, the light volume in trading could spark big moves in the stock because, you know, certain buys coming in or sales coming in could, you know, over, you know, overdo that particular stock. But um, I feel the time frame kind of helps a little bit as well. Um, yeah, I've been amazed at the amount of premium collected because, you know, the market, the, the, there's good premium to be had even on the shorter time frames like I'm talking about. And... Uh, you know, and then that stock doesn't move and all that premium just comes uh, out of it. Uh, it's been, uh, I'm amazed that there's uh, that much premium to collect. That much premium out there, right? Yeah, it's interesting that, that they have a lot still still available depending on, you know, with the time of the market too, so. Hey, Sean. Yes. The graphs over to the right, scroll yours up just a little bit. See where it's on the middle graph, it's showing trade numbers? Yes, sir. When I've got it up on the middle graph for profit, it's showing years. What's the difference? Um, for this one or for this? The one that says, the one, where the, the one in the middle that says profit. Yes, sir. 
Yours is trades, mine is years. Years, I'd have to look at that. Yeah, we'd have to look at that and see. I don't know if that's something in the general settings. These should be standard. Um, Cause yeah, these are- the, this Those are standard, John. Uh, let me check the, uh, are you on your, you're not in a demo account, are you? Because yeah, those, those these trades here should relate to this graph here. So like my profit of 10, trade 10, profit of 10 is just displayed graphically here. Okay, in the table on the bottom left that you just pointed to, under the trade column, mine is yours, yours is trades. Uh, what symbol are you on? I am on Vertex Pharmaceuticals, VRTX. Let's see. So we might be on a different screen. Give me one second. Let me duplicate this. I'm in stocks seasonal analysis. Yeah, we might be because seasonal, if you're not breaking down the trade, it's just going to show you uh, the, the years. Yeah. So how did, so what was the next step you did to get to? Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, no problem. So I just changed my, I changed my strategy here to the strategy that I would want to employ, which was the iron butterfly. And then you could change your profit target to 15, max profit, because I'm taking 15% of my max profit, which is my credit. I changed that to weekly, my weekly, because I want a weekly option. I did six on there. And if you hit analyze, after I made those different adjustments, if I hit analyze, it's going to analyze this based on, you know, that strategy. It's going to analyze that Sarepta. So what I did was I actually, so we're still showing years here, which is the same, right? Your trade 10 through trade one is the same because you're doing one trade per year based on the seasonality time frame. Um, but what I did was I hit bulk. And then once I hit bulk, it's going to take me to the page to run my bulk analysis. If I just hit analysis here, that's when it's going to run and it'll run to show me the actual individual trades down below. Perfect. Thank you. Yep, no problem. So on this trade, just hit the analysis page. And then it's going to run those 188, or I think maybe it said more trades. And then that's where it will come to, to this scenario here. So it should be displayed the same, but just instead of saying years there, they're showing them as trades because it did back test it based on this particular uh, strategy with the iron butterfly. So if I looked at, if I'm going to look at the Citrix, like we have all of our information laid out here. So if I wanted to look at the Citrix trade and kind of see what the risk to reward was based on the upcoming, you know, 10 days or so that I would be in the trade, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go into two things. I'm going to go into my options chain because I want to look at the options that are relative to that particular stock. And I think I said Citrix, so CTXS. And now I'm doing the weekly options and like Sudhir mentioned, you could either do you know, weekly options that expire this week, which would be pretty short because we're on the 23rd already, but, you know, looking at the following week, um, one eight, so did they not have, is that, the, that's not the following day, is it? Why would it not have? Yeah, I think you're missing a week. Are they not having, I was gonna say, do they not have options expire that week? I would think they would have options expire on the 31st, which I've seen some, so I'll have to look at that. Let me write that down. It's showing on Thinkorswim there's options expire on the 31st. I, th I think the system just missed one. All right, so let me pull out a different one, Dan. So is there another one here that we want? Let's look at this next NEEE. -E -E. So NEE. -E. And those are just week, those are monthly. All right, so I'm 0 for 2. Try Hershey. Hershey. HSY. Let's do HSY. All right, so they don't have them either. So we must be missing a file on the 31st. Yeah, what does Reshim about that? Okay. Well, sorry, but that, so there should be the 31st there, but let me look at that CTX test again. And I'll just show you the reference and then we'll have to get those imported in there. So those 
So I would be using on your volume going in and out. Oh, my voice is sorry. Yeah. Um, so I would be using the 31st for everybody that's not clear. I'd be using next week's expiration. So, so there should be options that are expiring on the 31st because the market should be open on the 31st. However, it'll be closed on the 1st. So therefore, there's not going to be any options expiring on the 1st or there shouldn't be uh, the 1st of January. So if I click 1-8, just to kind of give a representation of what I'm looking at. So I'm clicking on the 1-8 options for CPSX. My trade design is set up based on percentage from the current close. So I'm wanting to sell options, a put and a call that's right at the market. And then I'm gonna use my expected move on the upside and my expected move on the downside. So we can see based on the current price that I'm looking at here, now it's moved a little bit intraday, but you know, let's look at that 133 price. So I'd be using a 133 put and a 133 call for my sell. And then based on the expected move, which is just adding these two options up, my mid price is 313 plus 330. So you're talking roughly about 640, 650 would be my expected move on either side. So I'm gonna go into my virtual portfolio. Let me duplicate this. So I'm gonna go into my virtual portfolio. And I'm just gonna use one of these because I'm not, I'll do the ball crush even though I'm not gonna leave it in there. If I hit add a position, CTXS. And I'm going to use the iron butterfly strategy. So their options show there. All right. So I'm going to stick to the 1.8, but I'll I'll come back and show you this 12:31st, which is strange that we're looking at the option table here versus not the other. So if I hit 1.8, I said 1.33. And then, so we said roughly 660, 650, 660. So I'd be doing, you know, roughly seven bucks on the upside, which would be a 140. And then $7 on the downside, which would be 126. And then, so we can see my risk graph and my, my max profit plus my max risk below. So we can see that, you know, I'm looking at collecting around $448 with a risk of 252. So just shy again of that one to two risk reward ratio like we talked about and then we can also look at our break-even prices it has to stay within inside those two prices there to uh to make money on the trade and if it hits those numbers we'll break even or goes outside of the that range we'll, we'll actually lose money on the trade so to a capped loss of 252 so um you know so let me look at these options real quick if i'm looking at 1231 and i'm looking at the 133s uh, it's showing me roughly four dollars, so let's just say five bucks. So I, I typically try to add a little bit on top of that just to give me some wiggle room. So if I do one thirty-eight, and then I do my one twenty-seven, um, we can see my risk to reward profile is getting smaller. Um, you know, I'm looking at basically collecting three twenty-five with a risk of two seventy-five. So, you know, that being said, um, you know, obviously the other one's going to offer a little better risk to reward. Uh, just based on the fact on the other trade, I'm actually going out a little further in time for another week. Um, and that spread on the other one, I think, was a little bit wider, um, whereas this one's a little bit tighter and the time frame is is less as well. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's what I would do. I would generate the trade idea like this. I'll, I'll probably set up another portfolio when we get off the call and just track this one for everybody so we can kind of see the progression of it. Um, but, uh, but that's how I would put it in my virtual portfolio and and that's just kind of the risk profile just to show you what that trade looks like. Um, so we got that. And then what I did hey, want to show you. Um, Sean, you hear me? Yeah. Hey, uh, scroll down. Do you have that trade button where yes. you can add, add it to your. I haven't used that, so I didn't want to do it by mistake. <laughs> but you should be able to add it to your portfolio. Let me close these two right here. And if you hit trade. Should work. Yep. So it adds the 115 because it's adding the monthly. Um, because I, I do have it on monthly. So give me one second. Let me change it. I think that was in the bulk. Oh, it's in the bulk. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So I don't know why it's on that monthly, but yeah. So if you hit that trade button, it should add it in there appropriately based on the criteria that you have set here. 
So yeah, that's cool. And then you can see it as well. So typically yeah. what you'll do is if you said, um, if I selected the portfolio, let's just say I selected that one. Once you select the portfolio, then it'll give you a risk profile down below. Um, until you select that portfolio, it won't show you any of this information. Um, so the other one that I wanted to show you guys is same, same setup, seasonal, but I wanted to look at trades that typically, like I mentioned, you know, if, if hedge funds or people get out now and then they rebuy stuff the first of the year, I want to look at some stocks that make some moves after the first of the year. So I can't go forward in time from 1222 from today because obviously that data is not available yet and hasn't been completed. But I can use my time machine and go back to January, you know, this year. And let's say I start on January 3rd, um, which is typically the first, first day of the new year. So once I go back to January 3rd of this year, then I can run the seasonal analysis based on the next 20 days. And then I can look at the historical changes over the past 10 years prior to this past January. And then that'll give me my good seasonal analysis based on stocks that you know typically will move in that January timeframe or have moved on average in that timeframe. So um, you know, if you're looking at a timeframe that hasn't come to about or not the current day's time frame in the past you'll need to use that calendar to go back in time so if you wanted to look at what happens in july you'd have to go back using the calendar to july and then do the do the back test or do the results based on that so january 3rd 2020 so show me all the stocks that the price change is greater than or equal to 10 percent in the next 20 days i want to say show me all of them that has done that and ran out of 10 times um, if I look at this one, so only one comes up. Remember, I'm using a fairly tight list, this liquid options list, but that's fine. Netflix, it shows me that it, it does that on average. Um, if I want to look at Netflix and use a different strategy, like maybe my bull put strategy, I could say bull put strategy, 70% profit of my max profit, 200% stop loss. Um, 30 days to expire is fine because I'm selling a put spread, so I want the options to expire worthless. Um, and then I can use either weekly or monthlies depending on what I want to do. I'll look at the monthlies. Uh, lower standard deviation, strikes from leg one. If I hit analyze, it's going to run the analysis on that. We can see almost an 89% win rate with a 7.38 profit factor. Um, just a side note, uh, I use 70% profit target of my credit received. And the reason I do that is because very rarely, if there's time left on your trade, um, will they value your options you know, at, at near zero. It's very hard for the market to value those options at zero if there's time left on the trade, especially in a stock like Netflix or Amazon or some of your stocks that can make pretty big moves in a short period of time because they know that that probability or that possibility is there, not the probability, but the possibility. So I typically just get into these trades assuming that if I collect 100 bucks for selling the put spread, I'm going to try to get out at 70 or at $30. So I'm able to collect my $70. Um, I think a little more aggressive than that sometimes is a little bit harder to hit. But that's my uh, my personal preference. And uh, you, know, you can test it other ways and see what, what kind of works best for you. Um, so yeah, so this one, you know, takes into account Netflix. So basically, if you wanted to look at a stocks that might move in January, Netflix would be one. Something to note is Netflix does have earnings coming up. If you remember, we looked at Netflix in our earnings plan. So Netflix on the 28th of this month would be looking at a bullish pre-runner strategy. So, you know, based on the bullish pre-runner strategy, plus the possibility of, you know, the stock going up on average, you know, in the month of January, you know, might lead to, to couple other good thoughts and maybe some good trades as well. So just keep that in mind. If I go eight out of 10, let's see, uh, this another max. I thought there was some more. Let me change um, 20 days. Let's change this to seven and leave that eight out of 10. Um, so here, 7% in the coming 20 days, eight out of 10 times. We can see our list is a bit bigger, talking about 19 stocks. Um, but if you look at some of these, again, Netflix, uh, United Rentals, um, and then you have, uh, you know, DR Horton, KB Holmes, again, some of those ones that we had seen on the other list as well. So uh, this Lanier, home, another home builder, I believe as well. I had one that had 
Chipotle on there. Maybe I was using 5% because the 5% move is, is pretty good over a 20 day time frame. Um, yeah, so you can see 5%, 20 days, 8 out of 10, Netflix, Chipotle. You know, if I do, I might be careful of just based on uh, what's going on. But we can see there's 55 items here. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot more to be tested if you wanted to look at a list like that. So, um, again, you can do something like this, run Chipotle using a similar type bull put strategy. Uh, and you can see Chipotle using that bull put strategy starting on January 3rd on the first of the year. 100% win rate um, using that type of strategy. So credits are small, because remember when we're selling put spreads, we're kind of getting some smaller credits to do so, but uh, I don't think it negates the validity of the trade uh, nonetheless. So um, you could run a bulk analysis, save the file. Typically that's what I'll do is I'll run the bulk analysis on 55 or let's say 20 different stocks. If some of them look good, I'll save the Excel file on my desktop and then I'll just take that file and make my trading notes on there as I see fit. So if I know, you know, Netflix is coming up, I'll have that file and I can just say, okay, well, get ready for that day, put that trade in and, and here we go. So any questions on, uh, on that? All right, good. I think, I think that's all that I had um, to talk about, mainly the earnings plan that we've been looking at. Uh, make sure you're still looking for the studies. You know, we have the studies coming out. So those are still still valid depending on what's happening with the market. But, you know, pick up the plan, follow it live or follow it, you know, in your virtual portfolio. And then, uh, you know, play around with the seasonality screener. I think there's a lot of great information here, either current day time or, you know, go back in time to kind of find some great trades. But you know, Sabir found the ones regarding the non-movers for the you know, using that word, so the non-mover seasonality and using the iron butterfly, and um, he's had great results with that. And I've done, I think I've done three of them so far, and yeah, two of the three or four of them, sorry, and two of the four are winners, and then the other two I'm still in, which I'm profitable a little bit today um, based on that movement. I think uh, Center is up like 60 bucks from yesterday, and Starbucks I'm up like 30 bucks. I did multiple lots, so you would have to divide that by the number of lots that I've done, but there's at least they're not negative. So um, they are they are up a little bit money, but um, yeah, that's that's my two cents. Any questions, anybody? I think that's it, Josh. Did we have anything else that we wanted to, to cover? No, I think uh, that was you know, so short and sweet um, for today or last one. If you... Um, if you have any questions, you know, fire them away now. Yeah, I don't have anything else and I don't I see any questions come over. But yeah, you know, as always, you know, we, we've been busy with the earnings plan and trying to do stuff like that over the past couple of weeks. So things are kind of quieting down, at least for me, a little bit um, based on not putting that stuff out there. So you know, as always, feel free to set up a Zoom or let me know if I can set up a Zoom and help you out um, with some of the stuff in the platform. You know, there is a lot of information in there, but, you know, I like helping people out and learning their strategies too. So feel free. So we're meeting uh, next on the 6th. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, we will not be meeting next week. Um, so the January 6th will be our next meeting. I'll send out a reminder for, you know, um, after the new year for that meeting. But next week we won't be here. So, um, so you know, happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, happy Same to you guys. Happy Good meeting. Yeah, and we'll uh, stick around if you have any questions. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.